Hi there. Today I want to go over how to read a basket pattern. Just like any type of pattern used in any type of crafting, knitting, sewing, anything like that, even a recipe, you need to know a few things about how to read the pattern in order to understand what it's saying. When you first look at it, it could look like a completely foreign language because of the jargon that they use, the sizes that they include, measurements, whatever it is. So I wanna go over a few tips to help you to look at a basket pattern and know what you're looking at. First off, you'll want to know some terminology. I have a glossary of basket weaving terminology on my website that's linked in the description below. It goes over all the basic terms that you'll need to know and understand to be able to read a basket pattern. Many basket patterns just give you the term to explain a process. So they'll say, now you're going to lash the rim of your basket. If you don't know what lashing is, you don't know how to lash the rim of a basket. So to know, understand the term and then be able to do what that term describes will help you to understand that step. So check out that glossary and familiarize yourself with some terminology so you know what you're seeing. Next is to understand the materials. In rattan basket weaving, which is the basketry technique that I teach here on this channel, you have a number of different sizes of reed and types of reed, and then of course, colors of reed. What I mean by sizes of reed is the width of the reed. So rattan basket reed comes in multiple different widths from a quarter inch to five eighths to an inch and everywhere in between. The size of the reed will be noted in inches typically or millimeters depending on what system you're using. The type of reed refers to the silhouette of the reed. So for example, this reed is a flat half half inch reed. So it's a half inch wide and it is flat. So it's flat on both sides and it's about maybe a 16th of an inch thick because of the way that they process it. Rattan is a vine that grows in Indonesia and is processed and the way they process it determines the type of reed that you have. So this is a flat reed and then there is flat oval, which is flat on one side and slightly beveled or rounded on the other, but it's not super thick still. There's just kind of a, a sliver moon shape to the end of this flat oval reed. And you can get all of these different types of reed in all the different sizes of reed. So here is a quarter inch flat oval reed. You can see it's flat on one side, rounded on the other. Then there is flat round reed, which is flat on one side and more rounded on the other. So it's almost half of a circle. This is super thick and used in very rare circumstances in the baskets that I make, but it does have its place and it's just good to note that it exists. Another type of reed is round reed and this is round all the way down the length of the reed. And this comes, it's usually sized in numbers or millimeters being the diameter of the reed. Often I use seagrass, especially in the rims of my baskets and as accent de decoration in the walls of the baskets. And this comes in uh, numbered, Different numbers represent different sizes. You can also get it based on millimeter size. And that is again, just like the round reed, the diameter of the seagrass. So that is the basics, materials, the sizes, the types. And then of course you can get reed dyed in different colors. So this is the natural tone of rattan basket weave or basket reed. As it starts to age, it becomes a little bit darker. So you can see a difference between this and these two. It's a little bit darker, more yellowed. As it ages, it starts to take on more of a tan, tan look. Here is a sage green and a navy blue dyed reed. You can dye it, it also comes in smoked colors, which are browns that the reed has been treated so that it has basically a wood finish on the outside. There are also lots of different handles that you can use in rattan basket weaving, rims and feet. And I have a video up here going over all the different types of handles and just sharing some of the different styles of baskets that you can make with them. So check that out up here and in the description below. 
Another tip to help you in reading your basket weaving patterns is to practice techniques. Often when you are starting out, knowing the technique, just like knowing the terminology, will help you to understand what your pattern is saying. So if you pick up a pattern and it assumes you know things, it's like picking up a new recipe with techniques you don't know. It's really hard to go from point A to point B when you don't know what point A is. So practice the technique, starting with beginner baskets and building your way up. I have some basket weaving courses you can watch to help you to do that where I don't assume you know anything. I go through each step and help you to create a beautiful basket through the whole process while learning terminology and the different techniques. Find those in the description below. Another way to learn these other than courses and tutorials where they lay out the whole process is of course books online, doing research, taking, a pers taking an in-person class because the instructor can help you learn each step through the process. Often I've used books as resources because they build chronologically through the book, they build on techniques. So they'll describe the basic techniques you need in the first pattern and then assume you know that specific technique in the next pattern, but give you maybe more advanced technique and so on and so forth as you go through the book. And that is really helpful to do. You can also use my YouTube tutorials and those are in the description below, which go through a bunch of techniques that will help you to learn the terminology and the basic techniques that you can use to build pretty much any basket. I have a free pattern guide on my website. Find that in the description below with lots of resources for free patterns online. You can find a basket that you like and use their pattern and cut guide to create your own baskets. So check that out for lots of free options. Okay, so those were some tips on how to read your pattern or how to get to the point where you can read your pattern. Now let's go over the structure of a basket weaving pattern. Usually at the beginning of your pattern, there will be a dimension or size of the basket. So just like at the beginning of a recipe, it tells you how many servings it creates. The beginning of a basket pattern will tell you what size the, bas the finished basket is intended to be. And that will help you decide if that's a basket that you want to make or have enough materials for. After that size, there's usually a cut list, which is a materials list that also has a guide for how long you need your stakes. So it will say something like five half inch wide flat reed stakes. And so at 18 inches. And so you would cut five stakes at 18 inches out of half inch flat reed. So you would read through that material guide to help you prepare your materials. Next, I suggest looking at the tools list. Usually this has a list of the tools you need for that basket. And I like to have a basic set of tools ready to go whenever I start a new basket. And my basic kit includes a stake weight, which is a heavy weight that I can put on the stakes to hold them in place. So they're not moving around crazy when I'm trying to lay out the base of my basket. A pair of reed scissors, short bladed scissors for cutting reed. It gives a nice leverage on the reed you're cutting so that they're easier to cut. A flat tipped packer. This is a tool to pack the rows of your basket together. A box knife or knife to trim down the rim when you're making it. A pencil comes in handy for marking the center of your stakes. A spray bottle, cloth measuring tape, and plastic as well as metal clamps. These are two inch plastic clamps. I like the space for preparing my rims. And I also have two inch metal clamps for working the walls of the basket. So having your tools ready to go before you get started will help you to not be scattered running around trying to get your things together while trying to weave a basket. Next, prepare your space. And I have a video up here all about how to prepare a basket weaving workspace so that it's the most convenient for weaving your basket without having to run around to get things or be or clean up spilled water that you forgot to have a towel for. So laying out a towel, having your bin of water in order to soak your reed, having your tools handy and all of your reed handy and ready to go and all your space set up so that you're ready to do your specific basket pattern. And then you can get started with the basket pattern itself. And now you can start actually 
following the pattern. And first I would cut your, your stakes so that those are ready to go. And again, like I mentioned earlier, usually that's in the materials list. Sometimes that li that's listed as the first step. Um, sometimes it's assumed. So just be aware that cutting the stakes is typically the first actual step of weaving your basket. And then you're moving into the technique section of the basket pattern. And that's where knowing the techniques and the terminology is really helpful because you'll start out by building your base, twining your base, starting to build the walls if you're making a basket that has an open or closed base, or if you're making a ribbed basket, you'll be cutting your ribs and starting to attach your ribs to the rims. See, I'm using a lot of terminology. So knowing that terminology so you have an idea in your head of what, or a picture in your head of what it is that basket pattern is describing will help you to get started. I have a growing playlist of rattan basket weaving techniques. You can see that up here. I have been adding videos to that, showing the different techniques and explaining the terminology used in rattan basket weaving. So be sure to check that out to start to learn some of the techniques so that you can understand your basket patterns. So that is some basic tips on how to get started reading basket patterns and the format of a basket pattern. I hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like if you like basket weaving and want to support my channel. Hit the bell and subscribe so you get notified whenever I put out a new YouTube video. Thanks so much. I love sharing the skills that I know and the crafts that I love. So thanks for watching and happy weaving. I'll see you next time.